6 million new voters registered. So those are the beginning numbers. We'll be telling you more about those numbers. But first, let me take you now to Sophia Wanuna, who is about to speak to Martha Karua, one of the party leaders. That's NAC Kenya. Sophia? All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ken Mijungu, for those numbers, breaking it down for us. And we'll continue to keep an eye on that because, in fact, very important uh, going into the 2022 general election. It's all about the 50 percent plus one clinching that that's the threshold uh, to get the presidency but we want to explore a little bit more about coalitions in this country and we've seen some of what uh, informed the past uh, alliances and mergers and joining me now is uh, honorable martha karua she's party leader not kenya honorable karua thank you for making time for kivumbi 2022 an important conversation in a timely way tonight because of all of the activity we are seeing in the political landscape as we speak the one kenya alliance has been meeting in naivasha uh we've also seen the president and a number of this uh leaders as well been assembling uh in mombasa just last week and various conversations going on but perhaps where to start honorable karua is what is it about coalitions in this country that look look a lot like just use and dump in as far as elections are concerned clinch power form government and move on that there isn't quite depth in purpose of unity looking back over the years what do you attribute that to there's no country where coalitions have depth of unity coalitions are vehicles of necessity formed so that the parties who form them can be able to form a government it's either before or after elections and this happens in many countries. The first coalition during my time as a politician was in uh, 2002, and it was formed barely three months before the general election. And that's the National Rainbow Coalition, formed by several parties. And, um, because there was no law guiding coalitions, this coalition had a gentleman's agreement and an MOU. Before it, the NAK, which had Mwai Kebake, Charlie Tingiru, and the late Kijana Wamalwa, was also a sort of loose coalition because there was pre-election coalition, because there was no law guiding coalition. Fast forward in 2007, a coalition was negotiated, a coalition again of necessity formed after post-election violence. We changed the law, both the Constitution and the Political Parties Act, in order to shape the grand coalition. So Kenya has moved a long way into shaping pre-election and post-election coalitions. And we are not different from other parts of the world. And that, for instance, when you look in the U.S., you have political movements that, you know, are founded on ideology. Uh, the Democrats, you have, uh, of course, um, the Republicans as well. In the U.K. as well, you have the Conservative, you have the Labour Party. And having and wielding power to the extent of that discipline and tidiness when it comes to the running of affairs. But in Kenya, it's simply just to get into power. Doesn't that bother you um, that we appear not to transcend that? It bothers me, and that's why I lead a political party that is not only stable in ideology, but is one of the oldest parties, barring Kanu. It is older than even ODM. So, in Kenya, we will have to persevere to have parties that have character, that are defined by ideology. The U.S., the U.K., you cannot compare to Kenya. The U.S. is a democracy that is over 200 years old. The, U the U.K. is even older than that. What in Kenya, in my view, we are missing is elites, business people and professionals populating the membership of political parties to back those parties in terms of ideology, discipline, and funding.
because even where parties are funded by the state like in Kenya, there still must be a steady stream of funding from the membership. But if the membership is like in Kenya, just those running and the grassroots, mostly people who are living hand to mouth, then parties cannot have financial backing. And although those grassroots membership have sufficient um, ideas on how best to have an ideology or a party manifesto, the issues of bread and butter daily, the hardships of every day will cloud their minds and take away their time and therefore not leave sufficient time for building the party. Mine is a call to Kenya's elite that un unless and until you populate parties of your choice, we will not nurture good democracy in Kenya. A That's, government yeah. is a, the political party that forms it. And if a political party is disorganized and tyrannical, it's going to have a disorganized and tyrannical government. And you can look at the Kenya scenario and see for yourself what it is that we are having. Right, and, and on one hand, uh, going into the 2022 cycle, um, the election countdown which has already begun, you have the likes of the DP saying, away and be done with the tribal uh, politics and them being the points of convergence going forward. And he's talking about this hustler movement and bottom-up approach um, and saying he will not get into those kind uh, of alliances, if you like. Do you think Kenya has gotten to the point that one can win this alone without coming together, forming coalitions as we've known them in the past. Is that possible? One, I'll grant him his view because he's entitled to it. Secondly, I do not want to hold the view that it's impossible to win. Anything is possible, but it will take a lot of work, a lot of discipline, and we must say that in the recent past, we have seen wins facilitated by alliances. And looking at the scenario, well, one can say today that you don't want alliances or you want alliances, and as we move forward and you gain muscle, you can as well say you don't want alliances. The DP has one of the youngest parties, so I do not know whether he has reached that threshold where you can discount that you may need others to move forward, but we must allow him to hold his view as he is entitled to. We have seen you holding um, some meetings. Uh, last week it was uh, with the likes of Honorable Kunjuri, Moses Kuri as well, and then we saw earlier with the Speaker uh, of the National Assembly. Are you in that process yourself uh, looking to form uh, alliances perhaps within with the calls on the Mount Kenya region perhaps to find a direction and, and there being seen to be restlessness? I think we talked quite clearly that we are looking for unity of purpose in Mount Kenya and looking for our place in the nation of Kenya, in the political uh, dispensation as we move forward. Our interests and the interests of the nation as part of that nation, because my, Mount Kenya is a part of Kenya, we did not talk about coalitions at all. And perhaps that would be seen to be looking for a negotiating chip that you're saying we want to sit at the table as the region. As it stands right now, there appears not to be a clear air apparent to the exit of President Kenyatta. So essentially, isn't this about ensuring it's a solid, consolidated block coming to negotiate? We will be no different from the people of Western Kenya or the people of Nyanza, or the people of Coast, or Ukambani. People are looking for unity of purpose to be able to chart out their way forward. So I don't think why it becomes so exciting when Mount Kenya does it. Uhuru is the outgoing president. Therefore, we cannot wait on him. We must not wait on him. We must, as responsible leaders from the mountain, 
come together, consult with the people, and find a way forward. It is not right for us or for anybody to expect the president to be the one to chart a way forward. He has finished. He is running to finish his term. He cannot claim or continue to hold the mountain to ransom. Senator Bukarua, going up. into this election, to work with either Honorable Raila Odenga or Honorable Ruto, which way would you go in as far as connecting with what you believe and stand for in politics and governance? I'll say this, and I say this in the morning in a different media house. For me, as a leader, it is too early to ask me to start uh, campaigning for any one candidate. Right now, I'm campaigning for me to be Governor Kirinyaga. And I'm also campaigning for unity of purpose of Mount Kenya. I can say this without batting an eyelid, that when the time comes, we will listen to the ground, to what the people of Kirinyaga, to what the people of the mountain are saying, and we shall not disagree. Just the same way in 2017, I as a leader listened to what the people of Kirinyaga were saying, and we did not disagree. That's how we supported Uhuru Kenyatta. So the views of our people must be taken into consideration before as a leader especially a leader seeking an elective post. We must take their views into consideration before making that decision. And finally, Honorable Karua, the president appears keen to shape um, you know, the alliance that goes into 2022 against his deputy. He's held several meetings with his leaders and asked them to work together. I wonder also, just looking at the lineup you saw in Mombasa, the place of women in these conversations, um, that the last one, it was just what some call a whole manel, just all of these men and pretty much people we have seen in, in politics before. Does it bother you that in shaping of these coalitions we are likely to see, um, we're not seeing strong women representation? I'll call it a big boys club or a bull dance. There is no country for men only. The country is made up of both women and men. But whoever wants to meet whichever style is up to them. But I would say this, that the president must let the people go. He has done his time. We elected him willingly. We support him to finish his term, but not to extend his hand in the cookie jar beyond his term. We must ask him to kindly let the people of Kenya, let the people of the mountain make their decisions. Just the same way we made a decision on him, we will make decisions. But having said that, it is our responsibility as the people of the mountain, as the leaders of the mountain, to put our petty differences aside, to join hands together, to consult with our people, and that's why we, we are talking of Limuru 3, so that we can chart a common way forward. And to Honorable Martha Karua, we thank you so much for making time for Kivumbi 2022, sharing your thoughts on this subject this evening, the coalition building, where we've come from, where we are, and how uh, the next year is likely to shape up. Our story will continue to stay on top of. Thank you so very much, Nat Kenya Party Leader Martha Karua, for making time for us this evening. You are watching Kivumbi 2022. Remember to engage with us on social media. You can also tweet at Sophie. Fia Wanuna at Ken Mijungu at Akisa Wandera. We'd love to hear from you this evening. Your thoughts on our discussion. We'll in a short while be speaking with the Registrar of Political Parties uh, who's with us. Uh, Alutalala Mkwana as well, a political analyst, is here. But a little bit more detail from Ken Mijungu standing by over on our super wall on just how these coalitions have been forming, how they've shaped up as we proceed with our conversations this evening. Ken. All right. Thank you so much.